Vince? Now's the time. Tonight, we relight the four Advent candles and recall what the good news means. Jesus is the greatest gift who makes all these other gifts possible. So we light the Christ candle now as we think about what Christ's coming means to each one of us. You know, when you have flowing sleeves and flame, there's always some risk there. Greetings to you all. Welcome to Rencon Congregational United Church of Christ. My name is Reverend Louis J. Mitchell. I use he, him pronouns. And we strive here to be the Church of Jesus, following the ways of Jesus and justice and peace and love and sharing. Thank you for joining us for our Christmas worship service. Our campus is located on the ancestral lands of the Tohono O'odham Nation. We take the time to honor them, their ancestors, and their descendants who are still living amongst us. A couple of quick announcements. If you would like not to be seen on camera, on our Facebook or YouTube feeds, these outer two sections will not be recorded. You can safely worship there without having your self-videotaped and broadcast. So it's the holiday, so I have questions. How many of you are here for the first time or just coming in for the holidays? Give a hand wave. Okay. Chris. Chris is gonna wander around with a mic and wave your hand again. And if you would just say a, a word or two about who you are and where you're from, it'd be awesome. Hands up again, don't hide. There we go. Hello. We're Hi. from Oak Park, Illinois. Craig and Dean used to attend Welcome. Our church in Illinois. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to you. Right, right here up in front, and then we got some in the back, right? Yeah, you can't avoid it. I know who you are. So Yep, there you go. Hi, my name is Carmen. I am here for your Christmas service, and I am the grandmother of Daniel who is playing the drums and mother of Lisette. We love Daniel. So it's good to, good to have you here. Don't be shy. Uh, come on up. There we go. My name is Molly Scouse, and I attend this church pretty regularly, unless I'm in Nepal with my husband, where he's from. And um, my dad is from Missoula, Montana, and this is, I believe, his first time here, but he knew Carl Schreer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and Rosie, so, yeah. Carl, a good man. Okay. Going once. Going to up. In the back. There we go. Hello. I'm Danny Hemmings, and I live here in Tucson, and of course, we are also here to see Daniel play the drums. We're real good friends. The trios. <laughs> so thanks for okay. having us. <laughs> I'm just here to see Daniel, but I also am interested in other religions, being mm -hmm. Jewish, which I am, and also uh, a <coughs> Daniel. <laughs> so Daniel brings his own fan club to <laughs> Rencon, and we appreciate that. It's good to see you again, by the way. Howdy. Wow. Okay, I have a couple of quick announcements before we start. Announcement one is a change. If you open your order of worship, where it says the last hymn is Go Tell It on the Mountain, the last hymn will not be Go Tell It on the Mountain. It will be Silent Night and you will be singing it. And that's when you break out your handy candles. And Chris is gonna lower the lights and we're gonna have a candle sing of Silent Night. 
The second announcement I want to make is we're going to be singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And I want to say a few words about that before we begin. I want to acknowledge that a lot of feelings have come up around the singing of this song. Some people were displeased by the changes that we made a week ago. We changed out Israel for Palestine. Some people were displeased because this song, in its original sense, is precious to them and their historical and spiritual lives. Some, because they view Israel as a metaphor for all the people of God and not the current nation state of Israel. Some out of deep pain and concern for the suffering of the Palestinians. I ask that today we stretch to hold tenderly our differences and take this as an opportunity to grow together. One of the challenges of having a diverse church is that we don't all stand in the same position on either our politics or our theology. But when we have integrity with one another and we can speak where we're coming from, we have room to come together. So tonight, I invite you when we sing to choose whichever words feel most resonant with your spirit. What will be on the board is the first verse will say Israel and the second one will say Palestine, but you do what your heart leads you to do. Amen? Amen. All right, that is all of my announcements for now. I am going to turn it over to Kelly. Uh, good evening, everyone. Glad you're here today. If you could stand in body or in spirit and join us for the call to worship, the sung response, I'd appreciate it. So when we do the call to worship, um, you are the bold. Okay. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth, he says. Yes. Okay. We thank you, God, for your gift of Jesus Christ to the entire world. We thank you for your Christ coming. Makes hope, hope, peace, peace, love, and joy for us. Encourage us to do our part to bring goodwill and peace to all we encounter. Through the words and music we hear tonight, join us as one, bind us close for the sake of your kingdom. We pray. Amen. And now we'll sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Tiger Bass, and she writes, the instant of birth is exquisite. Pain and joy are one at this moment. Ever after, the dim recollection is so sweet that we speak to our children with a gratitude they never understand. 
And if you could join me in singing hymn number 125, although the words will be on the board, Angels We Have Heard on High. of us, and they're excerpts from Luke 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by the angel's words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come, up, come upon you, and the power of God will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is in the sixth month for her, who was said to have been barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And a little further in Luke 1, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowly state of one who serves. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. 
for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is the name of God. Indeed, God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has so shown strength. God has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God fills the hungry with good things and sends the rich away empty. God bless the hearing of his word to our ears tonight. You don't have to be afraid to clap. We clap here. Just try it again. One more time. You might be from one of those churches that are very, very silent. I appreciate a good call and response and a very good clap. So before I get started, Merry Christmas to you one and all. May God bless you and keep you. And I invite you now with full awareness that we are not out of cold, flu, or COVID season to greet one another with the passing of the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. <clears throat> this buys me another piece of time. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And with you. And with you. Peace. Peace. I like that. That's going to be our next picture. My uh, grandson got a picture of the Mona Lisa dream. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's a good thing. That on his t-shirt so he can wear it to school. Aw. They were just the cutest. Where do I sign up to the Daniel Fan Club for the official newsletter? And online? It's online? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We, we got to get, we got to have shirts and, and badges. And, yeah. I'm just going to have a shirt that says, I'm just here with Daniel. I'm just here with Daniel. Yeah. 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 What about the merch? <laughs> that's what I got to work up the merch. <coughs> Daniel's a member, why aren't you? Right. Oh. Slogan 2024. See? <laughs> All the cool kids are members here. If you haven't greeted someone that you haven't met yet, you're not done. 
Greet somebody you haven't met. Yeah. I don't usually give you all this long to wander around unattended, so, but it's a special holiday, so. God bless you. So good to see you. All right. Y'all did that really well and in a very timely fashion. Usually I have to, you know, wait a while and try to wrangle people back to their seats, but this is the second service, so maybe you're a little tired and maybe you've already eaten and you're already a little full. I invite you to incline your hearts in prayer with me. Gracious God of all times and situations, we give you praise for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. Plant the seeds of Advent in our hearts. Give us the resources to be joyful givers and the humility to be joyful receivers. Let the gift of Christmas be our commitment to reach for the ideals of Jesus in our everyday lives. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, this is going to be a brief homily tonight. Yay! Now I say that, I'm not always truthful. I, my understanding of brief may not be the same as yours. But I really want us to have more time for singing and sharing and a little bit of post-service fellowship that we don't always get a chance to do. This is the time we call Christmas. And it means all kinds of things to different people. And it has all kinds of origin stories. Some of you already know this. Some of you will be like, why is he saying this? Because I'm a nerd. It's OK. <laughs> this time of celebration that we call Christmas, it is very unlikely that Jesus was born during this time of the year. Many theologians say he was likely born in May or April. St. Augustine said that the winter solstice was a fitting day to celebrate Christ's birth. He says, and I quote, hence it is that he was born on the day, which is the shortest of our earthly reckoning, and from which subsequent days begin to increase in length. <coughs> He therefore, who bent low and lifted us up, chose the shortest day, yet the one whence light begins to increase. Some say it was an appropriation of the celebration of the Roman Saturnalia. A 19th century Syrian bishop wrote, it was the custom of the pagans to celebrate on the same day the 25th of December, the birth of their son, S-U-N, son, at which they kindled lights in tokens of festivity. And in these solemnities and revelries, the Christians also took part. Accordingly, when the doctors of the church perceived that the Christians had a leaning to this festival, they took counsel and resolved that the true nativity should be I can't even say this word, Solemn, uh, solemnized, made solemn, there we go, on this day. That's a lot to track, but you know I like to sprinkle a little history and relativity into things. Whenever Jesus was born, it is undeniable that his birth changed the course of human history in so many ways. For today, I invite us to think about and celebrate the good news of Jesus, whether you experience him as a prophet, a rabbi, a redeemer, a savior, the awaited Messiah character in the New Testament story, a teller of strange parables, a healer of the sick, an exorcist of demons, he who walked on water and raised the dead, he is, for some, the light of the world. For some, the holy intercessor that brings forgiveness of sin. For some, a spiritual leader who taught that love and peace 
were central to a life well lived. He who is said to have been crucified died and rose from the dead, walked among the living and ascended to heaven to return to us again someday. However you access Jesus, however you understand Jesus, however you embrace Jesus, take this opportunity to give thanks for what Jesus is in your life today. In the United Church of Christ, we have a saying that Jesus is still speaking. I am encouraging you to join me in inviting Jesus to speak to you, in you, and sit with an open heart to await a fresh anointing on your life. God has a purpose for all of us. This is an opportunity to ask in prayer and meditation and to listen openly and quietly for God to give you what you need to do in your future. May it be so. Amen. I promised it was going to be brief. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Hymn time. Please stand and body your spirit. I have to wait for the mic to warm up. <laughs> <laughs> I misread my own program. It's been a long day. I want to invite you now to just take a moment and center yourselves. If you feel comfortable, close your eyes and enter, enter into a time of prayer. You don't have to be classically trained. You don't have to have a fancy prayer. Sometimes the prayer is Thank you, God. Sometimes the prayer is, help me, God. Sometimes the prayer is, what are you doing? However you communicate, try to stretch your intellectual brain to believe that the spirit of the divine hears you and meets you where you pray. God of before and beyond time, we thank you for the birth, life, and journey of Jesus. <coughs> we thank you for the extraordinary faith, courage, and willingness of Mary and Joseph. Help us to remember your teachings during our celebrations. Plant the seeds of peace, hope, love, and joy in our hearts. Be the light that illuminates our way to more openness to loving all of your creation 
and let us be that light. While we revel in the darkness, not compared to the lightness, darkness is also beautiful. It is where seeds are planted and growth occurs. The light and the dark come together to create that which is new to growth. God, when we leave this place today, heal our hearts for those of us missing our families. Be provision for those who have no place to stay and nothing to eat. Be comfort for those who are yet grieving. Be a respite for those that are just wandering and need a tender place to land. We appreciate the joy and we do not take it for granted. Help us to be your arms and legs in the world, we pray. We offer you ourselves, our whole selves, the good, the bad, and the ugly, to do with as you will. I invite you now to join me in the words on the screen, this version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who is in heaven, earth, and in us, we glorify and honor you. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily provisions and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I should mention that tonight's offering is a special offering within the UCC denomination called the Christmas Fund. And so in the invitation for offering, I'll explain a little bit to, to you, but it's a fund that the United Church of Christ uses for um, emergencies with retired pastors or their families or if there's a poverty situation that uh, the minister reaches out to the church for. It's a fund to help support um, those who are retired and, and need some help. So if you will join me in a spirit of prayer for the invitation to this offering. Scripture tells us that love binds everything together. It is how we are held. It is how we exist at all. Let us reawaken ourselves to love's aliveness in this community and our wider church community. Let us remember that the Christmas Fund is a special offering of the UCC because it lifts up those among us who are struggling. Our retired pastors and their spouses who have suffered emergencies health struggles and poverty. This offering is a response from the wider church to, the, to answer God's call to protect the vulnerable and, the overwhelm, and overwhelm all suffering with love. May Mary's yes that we um, heard in our scripture reading tonight find yes in us. <coughs> Open in us what love is requiring of us today. And God, may we respond to this in faith. Amen.
As much as we have had our attention on the star and the manger just around the corner and all that we want to do and say, may we not forget to let love in. For the beloved longs for us to listen to us, to bear witness to us, to be made flesh and to live among us. As the mystics say, it's not just about if or how we find God, but even more, it is allowing ourselves to be found by the beloved in return, to remove all barriers to belonging with the one who created us and thus to all creation around us. So may we open ourselves to our very essence to the love that was first given to us. Amen. Do you all have your candles? Anybody need one? You have candles? Okay. So, if you don't know the words and you need the help, it is on, it's in your hymnal on page 134. Did you manage to get it on the screen? Because we changed the song. It's like, oh, you are so awesome. We're going to sing uh, verses 1 and 2. Matt's going to lead. And I'm going to ask Chris if you can turn down the lights a little bit. And let's sing it. And sing it like you mean. Stand, if you sound better singing standing up, feel free to stand. benediction for you that comes from my tradition. There was a song we used to sing right around this time of year, and it says, walk in the light, beautiful light, come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night, Jesus, the light of the world, amen. You need light, Alex? Oh, there we go. We might need some light. Alex might need some light. There we go. Jesus, the light of the world, and not necessarily the light of the piano.